Okay. Show me. Hi there, guys. Welcome back to the Dutch Sheet Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for part two in my build series of a cinematic quadcopter. Yeah, so what you see here is a 3 inch frame. This is the Ethics Cineret frame. I've already done a review, part one, on, in this series of this frame. And there will be a link to the playlist for this project in the description down below. Check it out. Also, in this video, there will be links in the description to all the parts I'll be using for this build, as this is an uh, introduction to this build, if you will. So, the intent of this build, of this project, is to build a cinematic quadcopter that's more capable than the Cine Whoops. For instance, the Diatom Taycan C3, I've uh, done a couple of videos on those, but all brands ha now have Cine Whoops. Yeah, so again, the intent of this build is to build something that's more capable and more crash resistant. And the first part of that crash resistance is this frame. This is a tank. Again, I've already done a review of this, uh, of this frame, but it has enormously thick arms. Those will not break. <laughs> and uh, even the, the top and bottom plates are uh, very thick, thicker than uh, typical quadcopters have. So it also has uh, bumpers and stuff. CPU parts. So the crashability of the quadcopter will not depend on the quadcopter's frame. <laughs> yeah. So the intent of this video here is uh, to show you the build and the parts I'll be using and show you why or tell you why I've chosen those parts. Hopefully that'll be informative to you and uh, we'll see how it flies in future videos of course. Tell me in the comment section below what you think of my choice of parts. Speaking of first thing is obviously the frame, then the motors I've chosen are these brand new Toka motors, Toka motors from Mamba or Diatone. Now the size of these motors, 1606, are, is actually the same as on the Taycan C3. So more than capable uh, for a 3-inch quadcopter and the Taycan is far heavier than the build I'm doing. So these motors should be fine. These are the 2700 kV versions. So the KV I've chosen is slightly lower, giving me more resolution than on the 6S Taycan. What motors do the 6S Taycan use? I think just over 3000 KV. These are 2700 KV. The Taycan, a typical 6S Cine Whoop, if you will, uses I think 3200 KV. But still, the motors are, other than the KV, the same. And they come in these, uh, well, typical plastic boxes, yeah. Unibel motors and these Toka motors were designed in cooperation with Korea Ria. I think Korea Ria was the first brand or uh, manufacturer to have Unibel motors. And yeah, uh, gorgeous motors, I think. I now have uh, quite a lot of uh, ready-to-fly Diatone quadcopters with these Toka motors. They work. And again, on the Taycan C3, they worked well as well. I had both the 6S version of the Taycan and the 4S. The 6S definitely was a little bit uh, better, in my opinion, humble opinion. Anyway, doesn't really matter. I set out to build a 6S quadcopter here, and uh, these are the motors I've chosen. They look great, and I know they'll perform well. Then, the stack I've chosen is also from Diatone, as you can see, Mamba stack. And I've used a lot of stacks by now from Mamba, and they, uh, they perform well, they've been uh, reliable. Just as long as you don't mishandle them, but that goes for any stack, right? And this is an F722 DJI mini stack, and that means 20 by 20 stack, as you can see it here. Yeah, so, 20 by 20 F7 stack. And regrettably, this is uh, uh, not the latest version. I think their latest stacks all have a USB-C connector. This one uh, still has a U micro USB connector over here. However, their latest stacks, the 20 by 20 F7 stacks, are not uh, for DJI yet. I'm sure they'll have a D4 DJI stack in this size with the USB-C connector and slightly bigger solder pads. Uh, this will work just fine, however, and I think uh, on the newer stacks, their 4-in-1 ESCs are the same, actually. This uh, stack has a, what has it, uh, 40 amp, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is the 
F40 Pro. You probably won't be able to read this in the video, but uh, this is an F40 Pro 4-in-1 ESC on this stick. So 40 amp, and if you're new to this, that means that this 4-in-1 ESC can uh, sustain 4 times 40 amp continuously. And probably 4 times 50 for a couple of seconds in the peaks. More than enough for this 3 inch build. This isn't a racing quadcopter, I won't probably be not be doing turtle mode maneuvers and such. Either way, more than enough for this build. The frame, uh, by the way, can uh, accommodate 30.5 by 30.5, so bigger stacks. But again, this will be more than enough for this, this build. And I already have quite a lot of quadcopters with this stack. Some for DJI and some not for DJI. This works, so I've gone with this stack. So the FV setup, <laughs> yeah, in uh, builds like this, uh, the FV setup uh, can be short and sweet. There's not a whole lot of choice. Well, there are, I guess, three choices by now. I could have gone with the DJI Air unit, but I have no intention of using the onboard video. I don't even like the onboard videos much. I have one quadcopter with the DJI Air unit, and it's hit and miss. Sometimes it records, sometimes it doesn't. If it records, it's okay. But uh, well, I'll be outfitting this this build with a proper action camera from uh, GoPro or Insta360. So Vista it is. I could have gone with the Cadex Nebula Pro, of course, by now, but I already had this this in. I have actually used this one to test things, and I'm not completely sure if I'll use this antenna. This is a TBS antenna, which is fine, but uh, well, we'll see. And again, Vista it is, and uh, well, what can I tell you about the Vista set? It'll work, right? Well, then a couple more things. I outfit uh, all my digital quadcopters with the TBS Crossfire. This is a TBS Crossfire Nano. And this is the, well, Immortal T antenna. I'll be using that setup. And why? Well, basically your control signal should always outlast or outrange your video setup. And with the TBS Crossfire setup, I should have that in my in the bag, right? Uh, so far, TBS Crossfire has been flawless for me. So again, I use Crossfire on all my digital quadcopters. Then I've got a couple of Different propellers for this build. I'm not sure. I'll probably stick with the Wind Dancer, Gemfan Wind Dancer 3028. Probably. And this here on your right is the HQ Prop TX3 uh, 1.5, so even a lower pitch. I'm not completely sure. Uh, these will be very different, obviously. The blade profile is much wider on the Gemfans, and these are very shallow in pitch. Would be interesting. I do want a lot of resolution. I don't want this quadcopter to be jumpy, so maybe the lower pitch will work out well. We'll see. Uh, on the other hand, maybe it'll be simply underpowered on this uh, very low pitch propeller, 1.5 pitch. Yeah, we'll see. Interesting. Interesting difference here. Then the last part of the build, I'll be testing a couple of LiPos actually. These are the 1100 mAh 6S Black Series from CNHL. I use these on my 5 inch quadcopters a lot. And uh, I'll probably be trying these first because I have them, <laughs> right? Uh, but I'll also be trying 1300, 1300 uh, mAh. The same LiPos but slightly bigger. Obviously, and that is actually it for the parts. So let me jump cut to a built quadcopter. Why don't I? Here we go. Hot cheeky day. What do you say? This looks like a drone to me, right? So it is pretty much flyable right now. I haven't test flown it yet. It's evening. And uh, yeah, I generally at this time of year, I leave for work and I get back from work when it's dark. So I haven't been able to fly it uh, yet. Everything uh, seems to work though, the, the motor spin and the FPV feed works. And let me see, did I run into any problems? A couple, but it wasn't a horror build, it was pretty straightforward. One of the problems I ran into was this uh, cherry antenna for the Visa setup. Uh, it uh, turned out to be too short. Uh, maybe I could have used it, but it was rather short. So I've used this TBS antenna. 
it is also left hand polarized so that will work out or it should work out but this antenna didn't come with a mount so I thickened it up a little bit with some tape and maybe I'll put some black tape around it to make it look better but this will work out just fine second thing I ran into was I have my, you won't be able to see it, uh, let me put up a picture of uh, the receiver placement, it's set on top of the Vista unit and that made the stick, this front stack too high, hi, <laughs> yeah, so for now I've shimmied the top deck up a little, you won't be able to see that probably but uh, there are thin shims, plastic shims, ring o-rings in between the the standoffs and the top deck so six plastic shims to raise the top uh, deck a little three millimeters I think um, yeah so uh, maybe I'll uh, look for a different spot for my receiver but for now this will work and let me see yeah let's have a look at the weight actually of this quadcopter all right drum roll please let's hope it's not too offensive here we go 277 grams that is not too offensive in fact that's uh, lighter than say a 3 inch Taycan or the Taycan C C3 that's uh, 320 ish grams uh, three, yeah 320 ish grams so I'm saving 50 grams here pretty nice and with a lipo uh, that's uh, 480 which doesn't mean all that much because it needs an extra camera as well but still I'm happy to see that it's lighter than a Taycan C3 you know the kind of quadcopter with uh, full on ducts and such pretty nice not bad at all I'm happy so far all right I have no idea how long this uh, video is uh, gone on uh, probably too long <laughs> as usual so let's try to wrap things up let me see yeah I'm again happy that it's not offensively heavy and the lipo choice these lipos are used on the C3 Taycan the 6S version so but still maybe I'll try something smaller I'm not sure yet uh, like a sub 1000 milliamp hour 850 900 we'll see and the propellers uh, these are again the wind dancer propellers 3028 so a medium pitch if you will or a freestyle pitch these the HQ props the let me see three times 1.5s I'm pretty sure these really are meant for lightweight quadcopters. The toothpick kind of, well toothpick, long range, long range kind of quadcopters. So yeah, uh, these will probably not work out well. First off, I'll try the quadcopter on these wind dancers. They look nice. So that fills me with hope that they'll work out well. So that's a good start and uh, yeah hopefully in the near future i'll show you uh, what this quadcopter flies like the weather is getting better over here and daytime is uh, getting uh, longer as well so i'll uh, hope to be able to shoot a video on the flight performance of this quadcopter soon stay tuned for that for now i want to thank you for watching if you are left with questions hit me up a comment down below if you have comments on this build also please let me know I'll be happy to uh, hear your input. Thank you very much in advance. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.